that's the story of our life is we have support for things. It's just, we don't have the dollars for it. Mm -hmm. And coming up with hundreds of millions of dollars, you can't, you can't do it in, with city dollars. You just can't. Yeah, there's no you way. Know, the whole budget for the city of Fernando this year, it's a big number. It's $40 million, but we use that to pay police and fire and parks and mm -hmm. water and sewer and garbage and paved streets. And, yeah. you know, there, even if you could find an extra 2 million out of that, it would be a drop in the bucket towards yeah. trying to do any work on it spreads out quickly. It right, does. Yeah. So you've got to depend on the state and the feds to do your interstates and your highways. Mm -hmm. Each day at Wesley Meadows is a new opportunity to serve older adults and reimagine retirement living. It is the heart of their mission that inspires their team to provide the kind of fun atmosphere and care residents would want for themselves. Experience the warm spirit and faith-based difference of Wesley Meadows. Call 662-429-2070 and schedule your visit today. Hello and welcome to The Real Hernando, presented to you by Wesley Meadows Retirement Community and produced by SRP Studios, podcast powered branding for business growth. This podcast spotlights organizations, ministries, and community leaders in Hernando and greater DeSoto County by sharing their stories and what led them to serve the community. Please follow us at therealhernando.com for all channels and social media platforms. As always, I'm your host, Derek, and we have a special guest today, ladies and gentlemen, our mayor, Mayor Chip Johnson. Yeah. Thank you for that there? great intro, Derek. Yeah. Usually I have sound effects and I can add like an applause, whatever. <laughs> that, or, that's about all the applause I ever get. It's just one. Or, uh, you know, <laughs> you might think there's people that will do the, uh, right? <laughs> it happens. Yeah, it happens. But uh, thanks for being here. Glad to be here. Good. And uh, this is your second time on the show. But that's right. You were an early guest last year or 2022. I came to your office. You were nice enough to share some time with me then. And, we got your story. I strongly suggest go to the realhernando.com episode page, go dig into the archives and you hear Chip's story about living in a submarine, uh, owning businesses, uh, all kinds of great stuff. What led him into politics. We don't talk politics. In fact, the words Democrat and Republican never come up in the whole episode, right? I think you're right. Yeah. And I did that by design and you know, just cause it was about you. So if you want to learn more about your mayor, Check that episode out. But today, we're here to learn more about all the crazy projects and developments that are seemingly exploding in Hernando right now and the future. What's coming up? What's down? What's the, in the pipeline here? So this will be a three-hour episode. <laughs> That's right. Hey, we got time. Maybe it's a two-parter, <laughs> right? Maybe, uh, maybe uh, May will be Mayor Month. But, uh, well, again, so thanks for being here. Um, we kind of came in and just jotted down some notes, you know. And as I was talking earlier, there are plenty that are very visible. You know, it doesn't take long if you live in Hernando to drive around to see what's going on. You know, we got Whataburger, uh, the new high school. And, I, you know, I want to learn more about how these things came in. Dunkin' Donuts is up and running. They are. Um, there's a new sidewalk on McInvale. From the high school to uh, the uh, you know that's to that's an interesting story. That is a um, federally funded. Okay, let's uh, start here. Let's do yeah. that. Yeah, it's you know these things are odd the way they pop up and people say, well, why did you do that instead of this? Yeah, yeah. Well, there's different pots of money that are only available for different things. Yeah. So I can't take sidewalk money and build a tennis court or pave a road. Yeah. So when these sidewalk projects come up, we look around and see where we're missing connections. Mm -hmm. you know, I think everybody knows that since 2003, if you build a new building or a new subdivision in Hernando, you put in sidewalks. We decided we wanted sidewalks there so our citizens could move around. Mm -hmm. And so they build those. And a lot of times they'll kind of bark at us and say, well, we're building a sidewalk to nowhere. Well, but if you didn't build it, then the next person come in, they'd say they didn't have, they had a sidewalk to nowhere. So they uh -huh. eventually connect. But sometimes there's connections that'll never be made unless we use the tax dollars to do them. Mm -hmm. So that's one of those. This is a little sidewalk that, if y'all notice, the kids from the high school, you will see them walking south on Mackingvale to mm -hmm. Walgreens. They're yep. on a break or they're the band kids and they're hot and they're going down to get a Gatorade or some candy and they're walking through yeah. dirt on the edge of the street, sometimes in the street, and there's just no sidewalk there. Yeah, so I, I live in Magnolia Apartments. That's right. Yeah. So aside from the inconvenience, Mayor, of pulling in and out, no, I'm just kidding. Just giving you some... There's always some inconvenience. Giving you a yeah. but, uh, but, you know, when my... 
my, when my daughter rarely walks home, you know, I'm a, I'm a softy and I pick her up even though we're right next door. But when she first started walking, there's a back way behind. Yeah, there's our, a trail back there. There's a trail back there, but it's, you know, you got to jump over a little puddle of water and, you know, then you get this big hill to climb up. And uh, so then she started doing what all the other kids were doing was watching, walking down McInvale on the grass, like on the hill. Right. And, and there's no shoulder there. Right. It's pretty dangerous. And then there's been times where she wanted to w just walk to Walgreens and it'll be okay. But I'm like, scary. So I would say, cross McInvale, take the sidewalk down, and then cross McInvale back over mm -hmm. at the light. You know, be careful walking there. Well, now there's, there's a that sidewalk, and these kids have a nice, safe path now. Yeah, so this is going to go from the Walgreens, finish that si sidewalk out that we we required Walgreens to put in a sidewalk, and it went nowhere. Okay. But now we're connecting to it. Gotcha. So you'll be able to have a sidewalk from Walgreens all the way to the south entrance of the high school. Yep. And so that's an 80-20 match. The federal government's paying 80% of it, which are our tax dollars. Mm -hmm. So I do my best to bring our tax dollars back home from the feds. We send them there, so we're going to get our share or more than our share if I can help it. I mean, if there's money coming in, you know, use it for what we need. That's right. And we've got some good people on our staff who work on those things. Of course, Gia Matheny, mm -hmm. the Community and Economic Development Director, she writes – the various grants, and then oh. each department works on their own grants. You know, we've got Dolly mm -hmm. and Jared in the Parks Department writing Parks grants, and mm -hmm. Austin works on the MPO uh, transportation projects. So it's a whole team effort. You know, there's yeah. not just one person that writes grants in the city. Mm -hmm. We just go after whatever we can get. I love Gia, and as you as well, we, are, we all serve on the chamber board, so I've got to know you even better there. And, of course, Gia, and when she's talking about the grant writing season – I, I wouldn't want that job. Uh, you couldn't pay me enough. It feels like it must be like writing term papers all day, every day. It is. And, <laughs> and thank goodness I have people to do it for me because <laughs> yeah. I hate that stuff. Yeah. All right. This, this comes up a lot. Whataburger. Okay. All right. So how did this happen? So let's, let's give a real answer to that. Sure. Yeah. You know, that gas station had been vacant for a long time, and it, it was for sale or for lease. It's a land lease. So that open lot, because all yeah. I know it as is the open lot. Yeah, there was a gas station okay. there, and it went vacant, and it looked terrible. And so the owners have done a long-term land lease to Whataburger. And while I was not in office, Chick-fil-A came looking at that site. You heard it all. You heard it, people. They did. And it was so close. Chick-fil-A is still looking. Uh, <laughs> but they talked to MDOT. MDOT could not give them a straight answer on when they might fix our intersection there at the interstate. Mm -hmm. And I think MDOT kind of scared them away saying, well, if you build this thing in a few years, when we redo this exit, we might tear it down. Mm. So they backed away. So when Whataburger came, uh, they said, well, we don't think that's going to happen. Uh, we, we do think we're going to get a new exit. We're not sure exactly when, but we're going to get one, but we think it's not going to, go over that far. Mm -hmm. So Whataburger is taking the spot. Yeah, they jumped right in. They jumped right in. They're taking it, and that's great. A lot of people like Whataburger. A lot of people don't. Yeah. But if you like it, it'll be there for you. And a lot of people are worried about the traffic. You know, here's the news. Uh, a restaurant is not going to build out in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. They look for traffic counts. They are only yeah. going to build where there is traffic. Mm -hmm. That's just the way it works. You know, if you, if you were going to build a restaurant – yeah. You you would build it where the most cars are driving by every day. That's what happens. But we are doing things to make sure it doesn't affect our traffic flows. So they will only be able to turn to the west when they come out on Commerce. Mm -hmm. Or they can go out on Sloan's Way and head north. And we haven't done it yet, but we'll be asking the board to make Sloan's Way a one-way street where people can't come out of Sloan's Way onto Commerce. So we're going to manage that traffic. So one way in, one way out. Right. Basically. And, and yeah. of course – you know, on the first couple of days of Whataburger, the whole world's going to want to go. There'll be lines. Oh, there'll be traffic yeah. problems, like the first day of school every year. But I've been driving around looking at the other Whataburgers, and there are no traffic problems. They it, calmed down. The one on Goodman Yeah, it was, calmed way down. Yes. The one over on Getwell, mm -hmm. you know, they just don't have a lot of traffic. Yeah. And, and, you know, we had the same citizen concerns about the world was going to end when Starbucks got built and when Dunkin' Donuts got built. There have been no cars backed up on the commerce from either one of them not even mm -hmm. on day one yeah so it's not been a problem you know things mm -hmm. are handled I, I have to say i have a staff that really works with these companies 
beforehand and makes them do the right thing so we don't have traffic problems. Mm -hmm. We're still going to have a lot of cars, um, and, and people are going to come to those businesses. But when they come to those businesses, they are paying sales taxes. Those sales tax dollars go into the general fund and will help pave your streets, pay your policemen, build the fourth fire station we're going to need soon. Yeah. So it's, it's good when we have things that people like to use and that can provide some monies back to the citizens in the form of sales taxes and property taxes so the citizens can have good streets and good mm -hmm. fire and good police and all those other things we Absolutely. need. Absolutely. Before we move on, What's the ETA of it opening? Is it going to be 2024? It could it could open by the end of the year. Yeah, they, they've had a little bit of a slowdown uh, because that was an old gas station. Yeah. They had kind of some brownfield issues where they had a little oil in the dirt or gas in the dirt. Yeah. They had to dig that out. You got to clean that, that out. <laughs> but, hey, we're getting a clean site, you know. Sure, it was yeah. kind of a contaminated site, so it'll be clean and fresh building there and it will meet mm -hmm. our design standards and 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 you know speaking of design standards we we have those and the reason we have them is if you have nice design buildings it helps keep our property values up on our homes yeah when people drive in and a town looks a little more dignified it just works if you look at madison mississippi or germantown tennessee they have tight design standards and that keeps the property values up and, and I collierville too when you go through you pass strip malls and everything. Yeah. They have to have white lights, right? You know, on the sides of the buildings, and that's yeah. right. So we're a little different that way, and people get a little grumpy about it. But I will tell you that my house is my biggest investment, yeah. And my property values are staying stable because of design standards. I feel like. Well, so. look, I mean, has there ever been a decision made by the city that everybody loved? I don't think there has been. <laughs> so, I mean, that's what you do, right? Yeah. Um, okay. I think I would hope everyone's excited about this. The new high school. Um, wow. That looks Maybe like, this one everybody will woo, love. And my, the way it's, if it times out as far as what I, I've heard is 2026. No, they're going to open fall of 25. Oh. Oh, so next year. Now, yeah, not, next, yeah, not this oh, fall, oh, but the oh. next fall. Fall of 25. Oh, okay. So that means my, my daughter is going to... Yeah, that's right. And it goes into 2026. Yeah. She'll be a senior at the new school. Okay. She'll, she'll be the first she'll, graduating class. Yeah, she'll she'll get at least one year experience in the new high school. But And it looks like they are spending near $120 million on that campus. So when you say they? The Board of Education. Okay. So the Board of Education is building the school. Uh, they're building that with your property tax dollars and the property tax dollars from all these businesses around. Um when you see the cities and the county giving tax exemptions to incentivize large businesses to come, we do not exempt them from the school tax. So the schools are always funded at 100%. Mm -hmm. So they have the money to build that school, and there is a need for it in Hernando. For sure. We have outgrown our current building. So it it's, looks, it's coming. It's going to be incredible. Yeah, I bet. And it's, the, it's a new design. They were building the same design for quite a few years, and they decided it was time to update the design, and we're the first one. Oh, cool. And it looks like they're going to have a great football field and baseball and just the and practice fields for yes. all of them. Yes, I'm going to miss hearing the uh, the marching band. I, oh yeah, being at the, at the Magnolias. I mean, those guys are drilling on that patch of land right on Mackinvale. All summer. the world all. famous, award winning Hernando yes, marching right. band, and you can see it. You can see the work they put in. And from my apartment, I can hear them clear as day, and I can hear the metronome clicking. <laughs> That's great. You know, but uh, they'll have a nice spot. And, you know, we're – gosh, our, our baseball team's doing great this year. We we just had a young lady uh, run a five-minute mile and, and win last week. Our soccer team was the first ever 7A state championship mm -hmm. champions. Uh, the the color guard does great. The cheerleaders are winning awards, and I'm sure I'm yeah. leaving out some softball, groups. softball, the, the softball team. Yeah, yeah. E I mean everything is going great, and the biggest thing that doesn't get a lot of noise is our our scores, our test scores at the school are awesome. Mm -hmm. So I just read some report from somewhere, and we were named the third best um, school school in the state. Nice, wow. Yeah. So. Well, look, I I moved here because I love Hernando, but. It was also because I needed to put my daughter in a good school. That's right. And I feel like this is the best. And right? you know, that's. And now people are going to probably want to move here even more because of, the, A, the school system, but this new state of the art school is probably going to be very attractive. Well, think? if you look back in history, we 
and people that have been around DeSoto County a long time will remember that when DeSoto Central was built, it was the it school. Everyone that could afford to move to that yeah. district. Yeah. And then Lewisburg was built. We know that Lewisburg is the it district for people that want to move to a school district. But Hernando has never lost its place, even though our school is very old. Because mm-hmm. we just got a, a great town and, and great students and great parents. Yeah. And, you know, the, the parents are a big deal and, and all that. So, And I think when you add all those things together and put a brand new school, um, it's not that we're encouraging people to move here, but people are about to move here in droves. Sure. They are going to want to bring their children here, and you can't blame them. So uh, there's already a brand-new subdivision across the street from that new high school that's been approved. Yeah. You know, it's going to have 800 living units in it and um, mixed-use development. Uh, I hate to use the term, but I think this will explain to people the best. It'll be like a miniature silo square. Yes. It'll have some, that's re- how I explain it. some retail out front with mm-hmm. housing behind it. And I yeah. think it's going to be a great development and uh, we're working very closely with them to make sure it's a good development. Yes. That's what the citizens expect us to do. If the mm-hmm. development's coming, they want us to make sure it's good development. Yeah. That's where I was going to jump to next being right across the street. Um, sometimes I'll take Mackinville all the way up to Pleasant, right? That's Pleasant that you Mount did. Pleasant or Mount, Pleasant Hill. Pleasant, Pleasant Hill. Hill. Pleasant Hill. Yep. And I, I swear one day it was all trees and then the next day wiped out. I was like, it didn't take long or whatever it was before. To, to, I can't even remember. I can't remember what it looked like, but one day all of a sudden it was just dirt. And I'm uh, like, that yeah. was mostly farmland over there. Okay. But uh, yeah, and the YMCA, correct? And the YMCA will be there. Um, Sky Lake Construction has generously donated a pad ready site for the new Y. So we have a large monetary donation coming from the Maddox Foundation, which we're grateful for, uh, this land donation. And they're looking for some more funds to finish it out. So mm. if any of y'all out there have a few million to spare, we need to finish out the Y project so we can get started building it. A good Y MCA. That's going to bring so much to the kids. Yeah. And and more programs. And, and never mind, kids. now you can swim and And for the seniors. Take there lessons. are so many seniors yeah. that go to the Olive Branch Y and do the water programs yeah. and the exercise programs. So, yeah. it's you know, it, it, and we've got good gyms in town, and they have good programs. So sure. I don't think this will be a big competitor with them. It really – um, it goes after a different market. Yeah. And, of course, the YMCA will also have programs for people who are underprivileged. If they can't afford it, they've got a sliding scale mm-hmm. to help, help with those. Yeah, it gives them a – place to go and, and get out of the house off the couch that's right away from the video games something that they and you know the why we can look at the history the why in olive branch has been a real asset to that community and we expect the one in hernando to be the same i agree um i'm very interested in what mackinvale is going to look like from ihalia up to 269 okay so it when you look at it it's obvious someday this is going to be development it's just prime it seems like prime land is and very it makes prime. sense. And then what, what I think is interesting is the new road that's put in is four lanes with a turning lane. I would gather that is because you want to plan ahead knowing that. So there was things are coming, right? That's right. That, that road, uh, was a connector road to get, we had to build it. The state asked us to build it, mandated that we built it mm-hmm. and realigned it before we could get the Mackingville exit. So they happened almost simultaneously. Yeah. And that road was a joint project with MPO funds, city funds, DeSoto County chipped in funds. And when we were getting those MPO funds, the other cities in the county gave up some of theirs for that cycle so we could build it. Gotcha. So this was really a DeSoto County wide project. And it's about a $10 million road. Really? That that little strip? If that you will. strip from Bahelia up to Green Tea. So, oh, okay. Oh, that's right, because it would, it would uh, at Green Tea, it would hit what's called Old Mackinville, right? Yeah, right. It would kind of go that way. So we've got that there. And what you're going to see, actually, I think the rezoning signs went up the other day, or the meeting signs. Everybody, not maybe not everybody, but um, Madison Lakes surrounds that. Mm-hmm. It was the gravel pit. And it's, they donated the land for the school years ago. They donated the land for us to build that road and chipped in a little bit of money on the design as well. So they're about to come forth to the Board of uh, Aldermen and the Planning Commission with their subdivision plans. So, and, yeah. you know, most of that road is going to be retail. That's what it should be. Yeah. You know, I always have to remind everybody, including myself, that when you can get retail – it gives us sales tax dollars for the citizens. 
and it gives us higher property tax. You know, most of us are paying a 5% property tax rate. And then on top of that, you get your, your um, uh, homestead exemption. So we're paying low as homeowners. The property owners for businesses pay 15% and the sales taxes. Yeah. When we get those things on our major roads, first of all, it provides services that our citizens want. And then it provides all those tax dollars so we can keep the tax rate low. Gotcha. Because we've got a low tax rate for property taxes, and we'd like to keep it there. Mm -hmm. And the way to do that is to subsidize it with all the stuff coming from these businesses. Yeah. It's exciting. I it can't, it is. Know, uh, I tell my daughter this because I know growing up, I, I I lived with my grandfather. You know, so I was with my grandfather all the time, and he'd always tell me, "Son, this used to be all trees." You know, he'd always say, "This whole strip area was all trees. It was all you know," and he always would go backwards and say as a way to show me how things have developed. And I feel like God willing, I have a grandchild and we're, I have no reason to leave Hernando. I, I want right. to be here for forever. I can say the same thing about so many areas of Hernando and it's exciting to see. And uh, I can do that with that section of North Mac of, yeah, I guess North Mac and Vale where I can be like, this used to be all just fields and, you know, and it's exciting. Yeah. And, and you know, you're also a little nostalgic for the past yeah, You know, and I live in the historic district, and I think a lot of people, when they picture Hernando, picture the historic district. So we have a historic um, commission. So if anything's going to happen in the historic district, it goes in front of that commission because we want to keep that feel. Mm -hmm. uh, every building doesn't get saved, but we do our best to, to head that direction mm -hmm. and try to preserve that history. But if you look back at the historical maps of downtown, you'll see buildings – in those pictures that haven't been here in my lifetime. Mm. So yeah. they were lost long ago. Things do change. Yeah. They absolutely just change. You know, yeah. my, I'm in a house that was built in 1927. It's the second house on that lot. The original house was moved. Oh, moved. Yeah. Wow. So, you know, I mean, even stuff that's that old is sitting on top of a place where something else was. Yeah. Yeah. And so we have to keep it in perspective. But however, having said all that, I am a fierce protector of our historic downtown. I just think it's, it's it, there's not much of it left and we need to protect it mm -hmm. as much as we can. So you'll always see me protecting the historic districts. Look, I'm a softy when it comes to town squares and, and town strips. And that's was was also very attractive to me when it came to Hernando. Is downtown's just quaint. It's cool. It's, yeah. It surrounds a courthouse. It's classic stuff. You know. Do you mind um, veering? We'll come back to Hernando. Sure. But do you mind talking about the highway stuff? I, I know you and all of the other mayors went to DC, correct? And and because of knowing you and I'm friends with uh, Chad Wicker and Ben Piper, two aldermen. Um, there's been talks and rumbling. And in fact, you even brought it up at a luncheon at a, um, a chamber luncheon a while back about what everyone probably understands the, the strip from Goodman down to Hernando. That's right. On I-55, a lot of accidents is, but growth is, we're just outgrowing it. And I know you, you and all the other mayors in the County have been working hard to come together for this. Correct. We have. And in a nutshell, the entire board of supervisors, and all five mayors have been asking for the same thing. Mm -hmm. And kudos to Mayor Kedron over in Walls and to Mayor Kid Adams in Olive Branch for getting on board with that ask because neither of their cities touch 55. Right, right. But they realize for the good of the whole county, that needs to be our number one priority. Mm -hmm. So we've all been going to the state saying, please help us, please help us. Last year, they gave us $25 million to start moving utilities. And this year, they have funded phase one. Uh, they gave almost enough to fund it. Um, the cities gave up extra money we might have gotten to put in that pot. And MDOT's got some money they're going to throw in with it. So the bad news for Hernando is phase one doesn't get Hernando. Yeah. But, you know, if you're using planning sense, you know that there's 10 lanes coming from Memphis down to Goodman. Yeah. And suddenly it goes to four lanes. And when you hit that four lanes, it looks like there's been a wreck because traffic goes down to 20 miles an hour mm -hmm. and it doesn't really clear up until you get past church. Road. It always bottlenecks. I'll always bottlenecks. And then there are wrecks because of that. It seems, it seems cursed sometimes. Yeah. It's like every well, other... people are dying there. Yeah. I mean, if yeah. you look at the, the numbers, the statistics, that's the most, most dangerous road in the state right now. Yeah. So 
you got to fix that first. And believe it or not, to fix from Goodman Road to Church Road, which includes redoing the Goodman Road Bridge, the Church Road Bridge. Oh, uh, so the, it's, the, it's, the Goodman Road Bridge is going to be redone. Something's going to have to happen As part there. of phase one. Yeah. The, the exit will have to be redesigned. Oh, and, because it, bo yeah, it bottlenecks just before the bridge, that's right. doesn't it? So that right. one mile or so there is about 150 to 160 million. It's a lot of money. Man. So that's phase one, but it looks like they've got it funded. It'll take how, a while. How far south does it get? Just to barely past Church Road. Okay. That's so it. really, that's just. And then phase uh, two goes on down to, I think, um, 269. And then from 269, it comes on down to us. Yeah. So we're phase three. So it doesn't sound real good. No. However, if phase one doesn't get done, we never get to phase three. Right. So now we're closer. Planning ahead. And I will say there are side talks and Everyone agrees that the Hernando exit at Commerce and 55 cannot wait till the end of the project. It will become a standalone pullout project and do just our exit before the interstate gets widened to it. So uh -huh. that's supposed to be six lanes down there. So they would build a new exit with a six lane bridge to be ready for the widening when it comes. Okay, so we're so not going to have to wait 20 years before it finally gets it. I, I exaggerate there, on the years. But it, it could be that yeah. long if we waited till the end of phase three. So yeah. we're, we're working closely with MDOT. Um, Commissioner John Caldwell is working. Uh, we were in D.C. last week, and you mentioned Ben and Chad, our aldermen. They were the ones in D.C. with me. Gotcha. And so we were asking for that, amongst other things that we'll talk about later. But we're trying to get federal help as well. Mm -hmm. But... What everybody, when I say everybody, the, the people that control the money, uh, Brad White, the director of MDOT, John Caldwell, our commissioner, uh, Delbert Hoseman, Speaker of the House, uh, everybody knows that that needs to be a design build. What does that mean? A design build means that you hire one firm to handle the whole project. You don't just hire a bunch of engineers to design it and then put it out for bids. Right. A design build is usually more efficient because the people who are gonna build it are designing it. So they can cut cost yeah. in their design. They're in it for the entire span. For the entire span. Yeah. And and so we're working towards that, that's, that's the goal. So if we could go ahead and get that done and get a real underpass there that'll hold five real lanes of traffic and uh, get rid of that squeeze it would be better on everybody i would hope it's obvious to the state looking at how desoto county is growing right isn't it the one of the fastest growing counties in the state it is it's the fastest yeah. growing and and you know the last time we were on a conference call with delbert hoseman and we didn't bring it up delbert hoseman said hey and we still got to work on that that bridge it's one of our priorities down there at on Commerce Street. So everybody across the state yeah. knows it's a priority. You know, it's it's all just a matter of funding. There's nobody that doesn't want to do it. Yeah. But, you know, the best estimates right now before they've designed it are 30 to 40 million. And you just, you know, it's obviously the city could not fund that. Yeah. And it's a federal highway. We would expect the state and the feds to fund it. That's the way so. it's supposed to work. So, the so again, the Goodman overpass to maybe church – just past church. Just past church, church is over a hundred million. I think one hundred sixty-five is the number. One hundred sixty-five. Yeah. Uh, what would what from end to end? What does this cost? The whole thing's about three fifty, I believe, to get all the way down to just past okay. Fernando. Oh, okay. So yep. it seems like because of that bridge on Goodman, that that really spikes up the and the church. Cost. Yeah, those yeah. are big ones there. Yeah. You're doing eight lane cross sections. Yeah. It, it's it's a big deal. I mean, they're yeah. going to spend 25 million moving utilities probably. Yeah. It's crazy. So, I also used to hear whispers of maybe um Star Landing getting an exit. That's part of the phase 2 plan. Phase phase 2 or phase 3, I don't remember, but it's in the plan. Very cool. So, the next one, so if you're coming a after Church Road, Star Landing would be the next exit, mm -hmm. and we need that exit, and we're working with the feds on that because we're building a new National Guard. And when I say we, we just all work as a team. Yeah. It's the county. The county is working to build the Agri-Education Center and a new National Guard Army that's going to be a big one. Well, how are they going to get their tanks and trucks on the interstate? Mm -hmm. They're going to have to go to another exit. Right. So we're trying to work that angle to get some federal money to help with the Star Landing Road exit. Uh, the county supervisors have been very tenacious in trying to get that done. Mm -hmm. So then we would come on south. The Nesbitt exit would change, get bigger, okay. be taken out, and it would realign so that, you know, if you can picture getting off and heading towards Highway 51, it curves. 
Yeah. You don't want that curve in there. So they would move it a little bit where you would go straight to get over there. Right. To the to fifty one, so that flows better. And more lanes in, in on the exit ramps, or uh, yes, yeah, on ramps because oh, yeah, those bottle sure. going north. Anyone in the morning going north, you know, fifty five gets backed up, and then you right. think I've fallen into this trap. Oh, I'll just get off Nesbit and get on fifty one. That's going to be a little shortcut, and then no, Nesbit's bottlenecked as well. That's right, and of course, <clears throat> Highway fifty one's on number two on our wish list. It needs mm -hmm. to be widened all the way down yeah. to green tea and there was a study that was just put out for public review last month i think where they went from church road to green tea mm -hmm. and they drew a plan the engineers they hired drew a plan put it out for public comment and it shows all of that getting widened with a turn lane and all that so um that needs to be done but once again where's the funding right yeah so that you know that's that's the story of our life is we have support for things. It's just, we don't have the dollars for it mm -hmm. and coming up with hundreds of millions of dollars. You can't, you can't do it in, with city dollars. You just can't. Yeah, there's no you way. Know, the whole budget for the city of Fernando this year, it's a big number. It's $40 million, but we use that to pay police and fire and parks and mm -hmm. water and sewer and garbage and paved streets. And yeah. you know, there, even if you could find an extra 2 million out of that, it would be a drop in the bucket towards yeah. trying to do any work on It spreads out quickly. It right, does. Yeah. So you've got to depend on the state and the feds to do your interstates and your highways. Mm -hmm. 5M Services, we are your comfort specialist. We're dedicated to serving residential and commercial clients with money-saving solutions, combining the highest quality parts with our unwavering commitment to delivering exceptional service to give you the top-notch experience you deserve. A 10-year parts and labor warranty is included with every install. Dial 662-560-7331. 5M Services, making your comfort our priority. Visit us on the web at 5mservices.net for more information. Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, yeah. That was another one that... Um, yeah, every, hey, to every, some. <laughs> yeah. And I haven't been yet, but every, and I could walk there. It's near my house. But everybody said the world was going to end when the Dunkin' Donuts yeah. went right there in the middle of town, and um, there's been no traffic problems. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, if you look at it, it's not their regular model they made a very small building right that and if you look at the colors everything's not bright orange and bright pink mm -hmm. it's a little toned down because we told them this is yeah. it's not legally in the historic district but i think we all picture the historic district kind of starting at the railroad tracks absolutely you know and and we just wanted it to look better and so they said okay we'll do that so mm -hmm. they got a nice low-key brick building there and it just it doesn't look it doesn't startle you like most Dunkin' Donuts do yeah, when you yeah. see it. You know what I'm talking yeah, about. Sure. So we, we asked them to do that, and they did. So I don't think it's going to jump out. I did have somebody say, well, it doesn't fit in with the character down there. And I looked up and down that side of the road, and I'm like, the character is old metal buildings. Uh, I don't think that's what we wanted here anyway. These things came up in the 70s. Uh, you know, so – it's better than what was in that little strip. Yeah. So you, you sometimes you just have to really step back and look at the bigger picture. Yeah. My daughter likes their fruity drinks. So okay, there we go. An another drive through. <laughs> Her sales tax dollars are going to pay some potholes for it. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm also curious. Um, there's something uh, being built behind Guarantee Bank and and uh, Arby's. What is what oh, is yeah. that building back there? That is a home to suites hotel. Okay, and another hotel. Yes, right? and you can see it come. It, it's gosh, it's almost got the top four on it now. Mm -hmm. and, and I do want to make note of something. It's a very odd one, but the street that goes, and I'm using street loosely, that goes between Arby's and Guarantee Bank, mm -hmm. and the one behind Arby's and Guarantee Bank, those are not public streets. Those are the driveways to Home Two Suites. They're part of their lot. Okay, and so we can't pave them. Everybody complains about the terrible state they're in. Yeah, the leaving yeah. like the Arby's the potholes. It's and terrible. The, yeah. And so about a year ago, we did call the owner and say, please, please fix it, at least to make it drivable. <clears throat> and the funny thing is, the owners went out there themselves with some bags of concrete and worked on it, 
And I'll be danged if the next day Facebook didn't say, this got so bad, citizens are out patching the streets. <laughs> I'm like, it's not a street. Yeah. You know, but I'm trying to always get that word out there. It's hard yeah. to get the truth out when the yeah. the truth's not as fun as the, the stuff you well, see. Well, that's why you're here. Yeah. This podcast, Chip. But I will say that <laughs> they will not be allowed to open until their driveways have the second layer of asphalt and are pristine. So they're going to be forced to eventually. Yeah, they, they, they will get the street perfect okay. before they open the hotel. Awesome. Good. To, oh, so that'll be in the next, gosh, just from looking at their progress, I would think within the next eight months or so they would be open. Cool. That's interesting. Yeah. While we're on talking talking about hotels, how about the Holiday Inn? Uh, we had a fire. Uh, oh, the Hampton Inn. I'm sorry, Hampton Inn. Yes. Fire. No one was hurt, right? No one was hurt, and our firefighters did an incredible job. I mean, I, I was able to go out there and watch how they really performed on a full structure fire. And I, I don't know if you, I wish everybody could have seen how their training paid off. Yeah. yeah. They were a well-oiled machine of professionals. Yeah. And I will say that South Haven sent a truck up too. You know, when, when something big like that happens, we all go help each other. Sure. You yeah. know, South Haven calls us, we go and it's just what we do. And there we're were DeSoto yeah, at the end of the day. We too. are. Yeah. We're, we, we are all one big team. We have friendly rivalries be sure. between the cities. As we should. Right? But, but we work together yeah. and it's just, you know, we went to DC last week to ask for these different things and the, the interstate first and foremost and the, uh, sewer money, which is not fun to talk about, but you know, all the mayors were there. And uh, aldermen were there, and we just were on one page. And every one of the senator and congressman staffs that we went to, and Trent Kelly, they all would say, this doesn't happen. There's no other counties that come as a united front like y'all yeah. do. And it means a lot. Mm -hmm. And if, if we think back in history, Interstate 69, Interstate 269, the regional sewer all of those were built with this group going to D.C. for 20 years, mm -hmm. poking and prodding and all asking for the same things together. But we would not have had those things if that hadn't have been happening. I love 269. Oh, yeah. Because I go to Nashville a lot, and I can avoid Saves about half the 55-240 hour, hour, corner yeah. to 40. No. And, I just know, I can take 269 to 69 all the way up. And that Mackingville exit has really helped us because the people sure. that live on the east side of town and are going to head north, if they think commerce exit is too congested for them that day, they just head on up to mm -hmm. Mackinville. Yep. Are we missing anything? Well, let's see. I noticed We you talked about Delta Landing. You know, we've got another development that's been approved over on Getwell Road. Okay. Uh, there's 80 acres that the owners asked us to annex into the city, and we did. Uh, it's south of 69. Okay. So, and, and we're getting ready to, uh, we put a water plant there because all that development up there, like the Gatorade field house and the other things that are coming are going to need more water. Mm -hmm. And we're using the ARPA funds to do this and we're going to get match funds from the state. So that's, what's going to build this new water plant. Is it just South of 269? It is. Yeah. Yep. And it comes okay. all the way down to Bahalia. It okay. stretches along get well. Gotcha. That's so it. that's another mixed use development that uh, has a spot for a big box store, restaurants, very similar to the Lee Summit development where the Walmart is mm -hmm. and the houses behind it and the Colonial yeah. Hills Church, you know, mixed use development like that. Yeah. So something like that would be there. Um, it's not fun to talk about, but we're fixing a few ditches this year. Okay. Uh, this board in our budgets each year has set aside some match money. Uh, there are um, soil conservation emergency watershed project grants available almost every year. And this board has made a decision to fund our 20% match every year. So we'll put some money aside. We've got a list of ditches all across the city that need work. And when you get a rain event like we may have tonight, it triggers something with the federal government. They say, okay, we're releasing some of these funds. And so the next one on our list will apply. Yeah. And if we get it, we'll get it engineered. And so those are how we've been fixing the ditches you've seen done around town. Uh, some have been done in Deer Creek and Fort Creek. There was one done right by the daycare next to Walgreens. And right now we are doing one that goes behind Heritage Cove, which is behind Gateway Tire. Gotcha. So there's one happening there. Those are those 80-20 match ones. Some odd thing happened last year where they released some 100% money, and we've been approved to do four small pieces of ditches, three in the Deer Creek, Fort Creek area, and one on Highway 51 near the church and that bridge there. Mm -hmm. So those will be getting done before September. 
Yeah. So, you know, it, that's not fun. Uh, people don't notice it much, but it's going to um, help some of these ditches that are eroding and control the stormwater in the city. So the more of those yeah. we get b- done, the better yeah. off everybody is. Um, because I live right there on Mackinvale, I notice when it rains heavy, if you're heading north, there's a little flash flood section. When you come up over the hill, you pass the apartments, you pass the car wash, mm-hmm. and you start going down before go- No, 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 I'm wrong. It's after the high school. Past the high school, and it goes down and back up. Yes. And you get a little flash flood there, a big puddle. Is that something that will be you know, that fixed w- because of all that? We actually worked on that a few months ago. And yeah. hopefully you haven't seen it lately. Yeah, I, I, yeah. But it was getting caught by the 10-foot multi-use trail over there. The water was supposed to flow off, uh-huh. and that was catching it. So we put a pipe under gotcha. that trail, sure. and we think we've alleviated it. If you cool. see it— I'll let you know. If you see it again, let me know. But I'll we take can't. a picture and text you. There you go. <laughs> and, and for everybody out there that's listening, you know, I, I handle a lot of business when citizens text me or send me a private Facebook message. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> texting is better, and my phone number is in, in the about in my Facebook page. Yeah. My, my cell phone number is there. But you are not hiding. Yeah. So this morning, <laughs> a lady called me about a traffic situation. Not called me. Facebook messaged me bef- at like 6 or 6.30. Uh, I car- copy copy and pasted it to my calendar and as soon as i got in the office scott got on it and we're working on that traffic situation this morning you know we we want to help yeah um we we want to solve every problem that a citizen comes to us with Mm -hmm. and some we just can't solve yeah but we try on every one of them and i've got such a great team around me yeah. That helped me get these things done. So I'm constantly getting text messages and just popping them on in my calendar and I'll deal with them the next day. And mm-hmm. um, gosh, a lady was walking her dog the other day and caught me and said, there's a sinkhole in front of this guy's mailbox. And I said, okay. And I called Lee Germany, the public works director the next morning. And it turned into people working all day till eight 30 that night, uh, calling in subcontractors. There was a sewer that had disconnected and they tried to camera it and the camera wouldn't roll through the pipes because it was full of concrete chunks and so it was a real issue a real issue and a yeah. citizen alerted us to it that's cool no not you know we can't notice everything yeah so i am never mad when a citizen alerts me to a problem yeah. now i do get a little grumpy when people just stick stuff out there on facebook and say well brah, this is horrible and i'm thinking well what do you mean facebook's never a problem if you would call me you know we, we, we would try to solve it. There's a know? group out there that we all I know. About. I know. <laughs> let's, on a personal note, let's let's shed some light on your assistant, Scott Smith. Okay. So, so you mentioned Scott. Um, and, and if anyone that goes to ribbon cuttings, A, Mayor Johnson goes to probably 75% of them. And then uh, there's always this other guy kind of shadowing him around. It, it's my good friend, Scott Smith. And uh, been your assistant for how long now? Probably year and a half now yeah yeah and uh he's like your your second hand man right you know he has turned into that real quickly um i've had a lot of assistants and they've all been great uh but we have grown so much we decided we needed to ramp it up a little Mm -hmm. because i started figuring out that i cannot do everything in that office i I drop balls if i don't have help yeah there's just no way one person can handle it all and so he's taken a lot of those things off of me uh he keeps our board of aldermen informed uh you will see a lot of our aldermen at these ribbon cuttings was because scott's sending them out little reminders and saying hey y'all we got all this going on it's just little things like that that really help a lot but we have lots of people that call the office and they'll have a pothole or something of that nature. Mm -hmm. And instead of me having to take 30 minutes out of my schedule of trying to get money from the state legislature, uh, he'll handle that and, and he'll keep me informed. And sometimes he'll say, Hey, you really need to call this person Mm -hmm. because I couldn't help him." And you know, he, he's able to triage, you know, and figure out what's the most important and get it to me. And we really have just gotten so busy that I, I couldn't do that. Yeah. Yeah. We needed the help. So absolutely. You know, we're, (laughs) when, when I, first came in office i think my first budget was about 10 or 12 million and now we're a 40 million a year company Mm -hmm. with 180 employees and it's a lot to keep up with so i'm glad to have a a a number one guy right next to me so so to stay personal again and and talk about scott i know i've mentioned this to you i've talked about this on the show before but scott is integral in me connecting me to hernando because he used to be the uh, worship leader at Christ Covenant Church, right, right down Thousand Oaks. Uh, 
prior to him taking that position, he and I played in bands together. He's an amazing guitar player. And and I wish I wish he would come back because you and all the staff and everyone that knows him as what he is now has no idea how am- amazing musician that man is. Because we used to play rock and country, and he can he can blaze yeah. on that guitar. I right? can't get him to play it in the office. No, but I've, I've, I've gone into the archives of YouTube and found a couple of videos of him. Yeah, he's out. Yes, he's out there. So, um, so because of that relationship, he needed a second bass player for the worship team, and he brought me in. This is 2016, and that was my first real introduction to Hernando. Every other Sunday, I'd be here for service. Yeah. And uh, and I just fell in love with this place. And then, as the story goes, eventually I was able to move here, and and here we are with this podcast and the whole thing. But uh, Steve is a very special person. Uh, uh, Scott, I mean Scott, Steve Smith. <laughs> That's an old college buddy, Steve yeah. Smith. Scott and his wife Angela, great people. Love yeah. y'all. Hopefully, they're listening or watching. But yeah, when I found out that you hired Scott, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. This is so cool. Well, you know, like most people I hire, I didn't know him. I didn't know him at all. He came in to apply for another job. And at that point, uh, my assistant had left to go to the the law field and I didn't have anybody. And I was Mm -hmm. looking through all the resumes that were coming in for other stuff. And I said, well, this one looks interesting. (laughs) And I called him in and said, what about doing this? And he said, what do you think about that? Because it's a different kind of job for sure. Yeah. Like I, I only knew him. He used to teach at Christian Brothers High School, mm-hmm. uh, and then the worship leading, um, and then mayor assistant. <laughs> yep. And I will say, um, I have such. I've said it probably two or three times during this podcast, but the team that we have in leadership at City Hall is incredible, mm-hmm. and not just in City Hall. That I, I say City Hall, but all of the department heads and assistant department heads. And I have to give kudos to the board of aldermen for allowing that to happen. Uh, You know, to get quality people, you have to pay good. And so they've allowed me to raise the salaries for some positions that we needed to. And they've allowed me to choose a team that I can work well with without nitpicking. And I'm very grateful to them for that because having a team I can depend on makes everything better sure i just know i can hand it off to a department head whether it be the police chief the fire chief planning director parks director um you know the the animal shelter whatever Mm -hmm. i can just hand it off and it's gonna get handled yeah it's better if you pull in the same direction yeah right and i'm sure there's disagreements and difference of opinions right but but you hash it out You, you filter that out and then you come to terms on things right yeah Yep. And, and we all know, uh, and, and you you have to remind yourself every once in a while, do a check, but we work for the citizens of Fernando. Yeah. And the, the property tax dollars and the sales tax dollars that come in are not ours. They belong to the citizens of Fernando. Mm-hmm. And so when the board is voting on that budget, that's what they're thinking is, is this the best way to spend these to serve the citizens of Fernando? Sure, yeah. And um, the, the board of aldermen and I, I feel like, from my perspective, And I I think they'll mostly agree. Uh, We have become a solid team and a model for how a mayor and board should work together and serve their citizens. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Are we missing anything before we wrap up? Um, We're building a roundabout at 51. Oh, my God. (laughs) How did I forget about the roundabout? So, Oh, talk about controversy here. Yeah. Whoa. So I would. Facebook um, blew and is still blowing up. That's right. Yes. So I would. um, Remind everybody that uh, it blew up about the roundabout at 301. Yeah. And yep. once the roundabout was built, nothing else was said because it worked great. Yeah. Um, I- I've seen a lot of people say, well, this is a stupid waste of money. We need a red light. This is dangerous. I'm a guy that watches and believes in data. Okay. I try to make data driven decisions. Roundabouts are probably 90 percent safer than a red light anyone that's gone to you um old miss yeah knows those two traffic yeah. circles right there and, and 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 there's a learning curve there's a learning curve so uh, the data shows that in the first year you're going to have a few fender benders people mm-hmm. aren't going to really understand how to maneuver it but what you're not going to have almost zero are fatalities gotcha people don't die in roundabouts it's a safety issue Okay. The other thing, safety is number one. That's just number one. Um, you'll have minor fender benders, but just picture it. Nobody is going to run a red light and T-bone you. Right. 
because a roundabout by its very design slows everybody down. So even if you do bump into each other, nobody's really getting hurt much. Mm -hmm. um, the next thing is they keep traffic flowing. If you're at a stoplight, cars are going to back up 20 deep. You never see them more than five deep mm -hmm. at a roundabout yeah. because everybody's just flowing. It keeps traffic flowing with no crossing guard there. It just works. So you think um, you won't need that crossing guard for Oak Grove School anymore? We will not. Interesting. So please, you know, go look at the data. Okay. I know everybody's not familiar with them. We didn't just randomly decide to do a roundabout. The MDOT told us we had to do one. But really? I, but I, so I could just say, well, MDOT made us, but I agree with it because I've read the data. Federal highways and MDOT are basically going to roundabouts and not doing traffic signals most of the time anymore because they're so much safer. Okay. And in the long term, there's way less maintenance. And if the power goes out, you don't lose a signal because there is no signal. Right. Traffic keeps flowing. There are just lots and lots of reasons to be building them. The traffic flow is important for Hernando, I'm, as much really other important. cities. But we all know living here, uh, it doesn't take long. And then the train. Yes. My goodness. So it doesn't take long. Can I talk for, about the train for a minute? Please do. Yes. This will be my first time to really speak about it. I've been. It's been really interesting. Um, people are still complaining about the train. Uh huh. If you'll stop and look and notice, other than going through and possibly stopping occasionally to drop something off at Valvoline, for the last three months, the train has not been blocking Commerce Street. Yeah. It just hasn't been. I haven't. Yeah, you don't realize it. But people still complain about it, but it's not happening. And let me yeah. tell you why it's not happening. I had tried to get the railroad's attention so they would talk to me. Couldn't get their attention. I asked the board to consider making an ordinance that would make the train quit stopping there. That got news coverage, and two days later, the attorney for Grenada Rail called me. <laughs> and we had a very, very nice conversation. Uh, we found out that what they're doing is they were there's a spur there. Okay. Literally right north of Commerce. So what is it? You could, for the dummy like myself, what's it, a spur? It's to store cars on. Okay. So if you're storing train cars, what do you got to do? You got to hook them up. Uh -huh. Well, hooking them up blocks the intersection. Right. And, and why they sit there for a while. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so if you'll notice, there are usually zero cars on that spur now. They've moved them south, which is very inconvenient for them. So we're playing politics a little bit. I told them if they would go ahead and do that now, that I would try to garner support for their grant application they're going through. Their grant application is going to build a bigger spur in Horn Lake that doesn't block an intersection, so they could put those cars there. And then it's going to fix a lot of railroad crossings all the way down the line. So I've been gathering signatures and support letters from mayors all along the line getting those handed in with their grant application. Interesting. In exchange for that, they moved the cars somewhere south for now, which is very inconvenient for them. But they're scratching scratching my back, and I'm scratching theirs. That's how it works, right? And and uh, I, don't, I didn't even notice that but the train, we didn't have yeah, the train. The, we yeah. are not having 25, 30-minute blockages anymore. Because that was quite the nuisance. Yes. It really, so, it really is. So we we, we – we may be doing some politics, but we're, yeah. we're doing what it takes to keep our citizens and, and you, happy. And you fix the pavement around the I – mean, my little Corolla didn't feel like it was going to fall apart yeah, we, after you fixed that. <laughs> our engineer went through and worked with our, our paving team to get that done. So. Yeah, that was quite the bump. Yeah. Right so And it's not, you know, it's not perfect, but um, the train very rarely box the intersection anymore, and we're very proud of that. Cool. Well, do you want to end with the train, or is there anything else? Uh, while you're here, this is your chance. I mean, we, ha we get a million downloads a week. So I'm just kidding, but, uh, <laughs> I, you know, I, I think I just want to thank the citizens sure. for letting me do this incredible job here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a dream job. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm, I get to do a little bit of project management. Um, I don't like the political part of it very much. Politics is just terrible, uh, but I try to listen to the citizens. And, um, I found that once a citizen comes in to talk to me or talks to me on the phone, we always find common ground. And I think what I'd like to, to leave with is that the Board of Aldermen and I, and I'm going to speak for them, and I, I think I'm rightfully doing that, we almost always want to do the things you're asking us to do. Uh, it generally comes down to not enough 
funding or not enough workers. Right. All our people are working lots of hours. Almost everybody's on overtime. It just is what it is. But we are doing our best to work within our budget and keep your tax rate low where it is and do the best we can for the citizens of Hernando. Uh, we are all pulling on the same rope. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we have a different idea of how to get there, which is what's supposed to happen on a board. You uh, disagree occasionally, but we're all trying to move Hernando forward and just serve the citizens. That's our goal every day. One last question, and you don't have to answer this, but are, are we going to be seeing Mayor Johnson further in the future? Hopefully. Absolutely. Uh, Christy and I had a long discussion, and we will be running for oh. office next year. You heard it here, folks. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And so when does that happen? When does the uh, campaign the quali start? The qualifying deadline, uh, or the qualifying opening, I think, is January 2nd, and I think it stops somewhere around the 1st of February. So that month mm -hmm. of January is when people qualify to run. So 2025 is going to be a Yeah, the election will be in April. So, but, but I am definitely going to run for office again with the support of my wife and family. And let's go. That's we're cool. we're going to, we're going to see if the people would like for us to continue doing what we're doing. All right. That'll be exciting to see. So mayor Johnson, thanks again. Thanks for being here and doing this with me. This has been fun. Uh, I feel blessed to have got to know you over the last couple of years from just showing up to ribbon cuttings. And, yeah. uh, and I appreciate you doing this podcast. I mean, there are people that always say, Hey, I heard that on the real Hernando. And oh, really? That's you, nice. You know, so it's, you're getting the word out to a different group of people than we would normally touch. So it's a that's, very positive thing for the city. That's nice to hear. Cause sometimes you can feel like you're in a vacuum in the podcast industry. You, you record, you push out the best content you can and you never, you never really know. And I think it's kind of cool that Wesley Meadows is your sponsor. You know, yes. they're here in Hernando. Yes. And for those of us with aging parents, what a godsend that place is. Yeah. You Jamie know, Clyatt, Heather MacArthur, they run that place beautifully. That's right. Oh, so if your yeah. parents get to the point where they can't live alone anymore, mm -hmm. that's, that's a real home for people who are aging. And, and, and I yeah. call it aging in place. They're mm -hmm. still here in our community. You can go see them just as often as you did when they were in their own house. So, and, and it extends through the city. Um, we got Coffee Central, City Hall Cheesecake. Yes, uh, the Arts Council and I, and, and myself and and the Real Hernando do. You know, trade. We help each other out. They're a sponsor, but then I sponsor cups. You know, those types of things. Uh, I don't want to leave anyone out. Five uh, M Services. I had Team Couch from Birch Realty. I used to have Gustin Properties. You know, all Hernando. Yeah. Stepping up and not, right. and this podcast does get a good reach. It does give value to the advertisers. Well, we are still but, a small town and we support each other right. and, and that's seeing the businesses that support in the podcast and you supporting the businesses. Yeah. It's a big deal. It's yeah. the way it works. Not one of them is asked for a analytical report. It's we want to support the community and, and they've kind of, they got on board and understand that this podcast can be a conduit. That's right. To spotlight Hernando. And I'm grateful for all of them. I'm grateful for you. And uh, thanks for doing this again. All right. Let's all right. do it again soon. Yes, sir. So again, well, uh, no, I already flipped the page. All right. Thanks for listening and watching. I hope you learned a lot in this episode. I find it all fascinating. And I'm sure we'll, we'll get some people that still complain. Right. <laughs> I hope you can sense the dry humor in that. But uh, again, go to the real Hernando.com. You can find all our channels. This podcast is on uh uh, Apple, Spotify, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, on the website, you can find all these channels. Uh, and I, as I mentioned, I always mention in the outro, thank you to the sponsors, but boom, you got to hear some of the wonderful businesses. And I'm missing some that are shelter insurance. It's another one that's local. Uh, and then some people outside of Hernando and DeSoto County, like Angela Kidd Insurance, uh, DeSoto Local. Wonderful support. This can't work without y'all. So thank you again. And uh, all right. So to the watchers and listeners again, thanks for hanging out and you'll have a great day.